The Four Knights of the Apocalypse, Chapter 138, Nations and the Forest of the Fairy King And inside the Tunnel of Whispers, Tyra asks Nations if he knows why that place is called the Tunnel of Whispers. And the herbalist promptly replies, it's because the noise made by the vegetation in that place sounds like a literal whisper, at least that's what he thought. However, Tyra couldn't confirm this, as she confessed that although her father had once contacted her, she no longer remembered. Recovering from his fall, the herbalist walked slowly until he finally reached the center of the cave, where his hero lay. As he approached, Nation simply said, Hey, I'm here again. How are you feeling today? Percival. And after two long years, that was the current state of Percival's body. But observing the situation, Tyra began to make some comments. No matter how many times you talk to him, he doesn't show any signs of waking up. His hair has grown a lot and it's still messy, I wonder if we should cut it. Hey, Nassie, how about we go and play somewhere? I know, the mushroom tower. However, it seemed that Tyra was talking to the wind, because Nations had all his attention focused on Percival. But the herbalist advised her to go on her own if she was bored and found the whole thing too boring. However, the little fairy replies that she is not bored. Nations then reveals that he has prepared a new medicine. But before he gives it to Percival, he thinks he'd better test it first. So Nations drinks some of that medicine first. And to Tyra's surprise, Nation simply bites his lips until they bleed while saying, Wow, this is amazing, I hope it's really effective. But Nation's reaction didn't scare the little fairy, who started laughing, saying that she loves the faces Nation's makes, which she finds very funny. But Nation's was concentrating and very anxious about the result of the medicine on Percival. Unfortunately, however, Percival didn't open his eyes and remained in his usual state. Once again, Nations is disappointed, as he had placed his hopes in this new medicine to bring Percival back. And Tyra realizes and understands Nations' feelings. And so she ends up calling Percival selfish, saying that he simply abandoned Nations and his other friends, without caring about their feelings. And Nations comments that when Tristan was angry, he said the same thing. And when she hears Tristan's name, Tyra perks up, saying that she and Tristan get on so well that they even think alike. However, Nations confesses that he doesn't think so, and takes the blame, saying that it was because they were impotent. Percival feared that his presence would cause suffering to his companions, and that's why he made that decision. And Nations goes on to say, Percival can feel other people's pain as if it were his own. So I have no doubt that he really is a good-hearted boy. And after listening to this little outburst, Tyra approaches Nations, and while touching her shoulder she asks a question, Nasi, you love Percival, don't you? And noticing that Nations has turned red, Tyra doesn't hold back, and repeats several times that Nations was very cute. And now outside the Cave of Whispers, Tyra asks Nations to call him the next time he goes to collect medicinal herbs. Nations promises that he will, but that he now has another appointment, to answer a call from the King of the Fairies. To Tyra's surprise, he didn't expect Nations to pay a visit to his parents. And this place, which seemed to have been taken out of a book of fantasy tales, was where the King of the Fairies and Queen of the Giants were. The Mushroom Tower And there in front of them stood Nations, who humbly asked, What can I do for you, His Majesty the King of the Fairies and Her Highness the Queen of the Giants? And besides the two deadly sins, all seven of his children were also present. However, King says that Nations doesn't need to be so cordial. He just wants to know how he's getting on with Percival. However, Nations says he regrets not having achieved good results so far. Even though King has been extremely kind and protective of Percival over the last two years and has even taken care of him, he believes he may be a nuisance. 
However, Diane tells him that this was a request from the captain, and that they are willing to do anything to help him. And that's why Nation should continue doing his research without worrying, staying there as long as he needs to. And after hearing this from the king and queen, Nation thanks them and says he feels very honored. But in the face of Nation's cordial attitude, both the king and Diane don't know what to say. His children found the situation very funny, as it was rare for them to see someone acting so formally. But Nations really didn't know how to refer to them. Until the queen asked him to just call her Diane, and the king of the fairies said the same, that he could just call him king. This came as a great surprise to Nations, as he had never imagined in his entire life that he would be able to address these two monumental figures in this way. However, at that moment, the expression on King and Diane's faces caught Nation's attention, and he wondered why they were looking at him like that if there was something wrong with his face. But King quickly says that it's no big deal, and that he really wants to know about his health problem if he's already feeling better. The herbalist then replied, Go, about that, yes, I'm very well, thank you. I've been able to sleep well since I arrived in Fairyland, probably because of the good air quality here, I even feel healthier. But that's not so important, asks the Nations. King and Diane tell him that he is a very important guest. However, one of the children, annoyed at the way the conversation is going, warns his parents, don't you think you're giving this human too much confidence? But on hearing this, King reprimands him, asking him not to talk like that. But his son seemed convinced that he was right. For he makes a point of recalling the horrible experiences that fairies and giants have suffered at the hands of humans. Including his father's best friend and his mother's best friend. So he wonders if it's wise for them to get so involved with humans. And King admits that this has indeed happened in the past, however, he says that nations are different. However, suddenly some frightened fairies appear, saying that they have very bad news for His Majesty the King of the Fairies. A changeling has happened. There was a changeling near the border. And this news makes both the king and Diane apprehensive, as well as their children. Tyra can't believe it's happened again. It made Nations curious and scared, because he had no idea what they were talking about. But for Myrtle this was unforgivable, so the boy ran to the place indicated by the fairies. And Nations and Tyra soon follow. Along the way, Tyra explains to Nations what has happened. She tells him that a changeling refers to a substitute child. And that this is the work of a playful elf. Where they exchange a fairy child for a human child. When Nations arrives on the scene, he comes across something that perplexes him. The boy walks slowly towards the elves, who are standing around something unexpected. Nations then stretches out his arms taking that little creature, that little baby, into his arms. Nations asked where he had come from, but at the same time a strange feeling came over him at that moment, and he began to say, this boy is me from that day. Soon, however, some cries for help were heard. It was from one of those goblins who had been caught by Myrtle, who was pointing his sword at him, asking why he had done that. His father had ordered them never to do anything like that again. The elf replied that it was to improve their relationship with humans. But for Myrtle, that wasn't a justifiable reason, and that's why he was going to die by his sword. But before the worst could happen, Nations asked Mutta to wait, because he wouldn't be able to solve anything acting like this. Mutta, however, didn't like hearing Nations talking to him like that and that above all, a stranger like him shouldn't get involved in the affairs of the fairy kingdom. But the herbalist says that he can't ignore this kind of situation in silence. Watching from afar, Tyra became apprehensive, wondering what the two of them were going to do. In the end, it was a lot of fun. A major disturbance in the apparently peaceful forest of the fairy king. A conflict between Nations and Myrtle is about to break out? Continued in the next chapter, entitled The Invisible Suffering.